So part four of our psychometric presentation is going to be a much shorter video than others. We're going to talk about apparatus dew point, otherwise known as ADP. We're going to talk about some bypass factor. We're going to talk about evaporator saturation temperature. And we're going to talk about contact factor. If you have not already watched parts one to three of this series, I would highly recommend you do so first. Um, these do build upon each other. They're really not designed to be standalone videos. So having said that, let's first talk about apparatus dew point temperature. ASHRAE says the effective coil surface temperature when there's dehumidification is the ADP. Okay, in other words, if the evaporator coil is wet, the ADP is the same as the evaporator coil surface temperature. Okay, coil is wet. It means it's at its dew point. So the evaporator coil surface temperature is the ADP. Now the apparatus dew point or ADP represents the temperature of the airstream coming off the coil if all of the air passing through the coil comes in contact with the coil. Okay, now this actually rarely happens that all of the air passing through comes in contact. Graphically, the ADP can be found on the psychrometric chart by extending the process line until it crosses the wet bulb temperature scale on the left of the chart. Okay, so let's take a look at a chart. We have our supply air temperature here, which is about 70, or our return air, which is about 70, uh, let's say 77 degrees. We have our supply air here, which is about right over 55, 55.4. Now, if you extend that line out to this scale on the left-hand side or at the 100% humidity line, you can find the ADP by just extending that line out. That gives you the um, apparatus dew point. Okay, So it's just an extension of the line. A lot easier than doing a lot of the math. Okay, the ADP and the evaporator saturation temperature are related. Okay, generally speaking, the evaporator saturation temperature, or the EST, is 10 degrees lower than the ADP. So if you know your return air temp and wet bulb temp, if you know your supply air dry bulb and wet bulb temp, you can calculate your ADP by extending that line out. Once you know that, you can figure out what your evaporator saturation temperature should be because it's 10 degrees under your ADP, Okay, which helps you in troubleshooting cooling issues. Now, we also have the bypass factor. The bypass factor, or BPF, is the percentage of air that bypasses the cooling coil. So if it's, if it's often expressed as a decimal. Okay, so if our cooling coil is point, our bypass factor for comfort cooling is between 0.3 and 0.5. For retail shops and factories, it's 0.2 to 0.3. 0.5 to 1.0 is for restaurants. And 0.01 to 0.1 would be like hospitals. That's 100% outside air temperatures. Just a rule of thumb. Okay, but the bypass factor is the percentage of air that bypasses the cooling coil. Now, you can figure this out easily with math. Okay, you have your supply air temperature, dry bulb, okay, minus the coil temperature. That's your EST. You have your return air temperature, dry bulb, minus the coil temperature. And you divide the two. The supply air and return air temperatures are dry bulb temperatures. The coil temperature is the ADP. So if we have a 76 degree return air, 55 degree supply air, the return air is 50% relative humidity, the supply air is 90% relative humidity, our ADP is 51 degrees. We plot the two. Okay, we have our return air, supply air. We drag it out, we find our ADP. Okay. Go back to our math. 
55 minus 51 over 76 minus 51 is 4 divided by 25. So our bypass factor is 0.16. That means 16% of the airstream is bypassing the cooling coil. The contact factor is the percentage of the air that comes in contact with the cooling coil. The contact factor is basically the opposite of the bypass factor. So the contact factor is expressed as a decibel as well. So to get the CF, you take 1.00 minus the bypass factor. So for this example, we had a bypass factor of 0.16. So we take 1.0 minus 0.16 and we're left with a contact factor of 84. So that means 84% of the airstream is actually coming in contact with the cooling coil. That's not bad. Now let's take an exam let's take another example here, okay? We're going to go ahead and go to the system example that I used earlier. Um, these were actually measurements taken with a testo sampling, um, the testo smart probes. So we again had our 74.4 return air at a 61.7 or sorry, 65.9 wet bulb. We had our supplier 59.1 with a 56.2 wet bulb. When we plotted this onto our um, psychometric chart, we came up with the purple line. That's our process line. Okay, now, we need to find our ADP. Okay, so if I extend that process line straight down until it matches, until it crosses the side, and I'm just going to pull it down a little further because we're actually, okay, so you have to look at where it first crosses the line. So we're right there at the 43 degree mark. So our ADP, as we said in the PowerPoints, okay, as we said in the presentation, our ADP is 43 degrees because, again, you want to cross it where it crosses the line. So in this case, our ADP is 43 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to come back over to my chart. Now, we set our evaporator temperature, okay, or AST, EST, evaporator saturation temperature, is 10 degrees under the ADP. Okay, so I happen to have readings from this, um, from this same site. My evaporator saturation temperature for this site is 47.9 degrees. Okay, so if we go by what it should be versus what it is, it is not correct. So there is a cooling problem someplace in this system. We're not going to delve into exactly what's going on here because there's much more to the story. But just so you understand, we also do know that our superheat is very high here, and this was not a TXV system. So by using, your, by using the ADP, by using the calculations we've talked about, we can actually figure out what our system should be doing versus what it is doing. It's an important troubleshooting tool. Now... Moving forward, we're going to talk about some other airflow measurements because you have to be able to measure airflow. You have to understand the pressures and stuff like that to, in order to understand psychrometrics. But parts one through four of this presentation, of this series, contained a lot of troubleshooting information that you can you do using the psychrometric chart. Get an erasable one or something like that so you can make notations on it if you have to troubleshoot something in the field because it does actually let you know what's happening within a system. And it basically boils down to a bunch of lines. Again, return air, supply air, where the wet bulb and dry bulb cross, there's your process line. Okay, you can calculate the sensible heat factor by drawing a parallel line. Your ADP, which is your basically your evaporator temperature calculations, evaporator surface temp, and EST, 
your saturation temp, just extend the line out. Wish I could use a different color to do that, but it didn't quite work that way. So all of this is on a psychrometric chart. You get a lot of information around it.